Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eddie and this is Do It For Yourself. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about grinding your own meat into hamburger patties. Um, I, when I was uh, making my dog's food, you know, I've been making my dog's food for quite some time now. And some of you know that I have a golden retriever and in some videos I show how I do that. Well, to do that, you need, you need the tools of the trade. And one of the things that I invested in to make his food was a grinder. So today I'm going to show you um, the type of meats I get to grind my hamburgers and how it makes a world of a difference between doing that or buying your standard ground beef at the store. So let me cut this video short and then we're going to point the camera at the meat and then we'll take it from there. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Okay guys, so um, here I have two cuts of meat. I have a brisket and I have a chuck roast. Now I, I really like to get my, my meat products at the nearest Costco because they just seem to have a better deal on their meats. Um, in many cases even better than what the butcher offers but it's really just a matter of preference. Um, I also find that the meats at Costco look better than the meats at, say, Sam's Club. That's just me. I don't know why. It just looks better to me, so I buy it there. You can get it wherever you want, but this is just where I go. Um, so what I like to do is I like to cut the meat in sections. Um, we're going to go ahead and trim some of this fat, like fat that we don't need, um, like a lot of this gray matter fat and stuff. But the last time I cut my meat into hamburgers, I, I cut away too much of the fat off of the brisket and it tasted a bit too lean, which is okay. I like that too. But I'm just saying, if you want more fat content in your hamburgers, which is what we're going to make today, then I would say leave a little more fat behind. So let's go ahead and, and guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I don't like I'm not a pro at this. I'm just using kind of like common sense as to what I don't want and what I do want on the brisket. But this is basically it. OK, so um, let's make sure we got this going right here. I would say just get most of the fat that you don't want on there off. I'm going to trim the stuff that's not going to render well, like this, I forgot what they call this fat here, but um, that's what I'm going to do, just like so. Oh, I don't know if I can get this off here. This is the fat that I don't want on there. I mean, if it looks kind of weird or gray or doesn't look like it would taste good, then just go ahead and cut it off. So a lot of times these guys like to make it into a science. I, I don't know. I just try to take off what I can. I heard somewhere that if you take off this part here, which is kind of the thickest part of the meat has the most fat and the hardest part of the meat if you take that off it's supposed to give you like an average of an 80 20 um percentage of, of fat and meat but there if i could find that youtube video that i saw I'll, I'll i'll link it this guy who cuts brisket all the time was talking about that so let's go ahead and take all this off here see how we're getting on closer to the meat I don't, I want to, like again, I want to keep some of this fat, so I don't really want to take it, take too much off. Also remember, like on my chuck roast, I'm, I, I don't even take fat off of that. I keep it the way it is. Okay. Whoops, that was done. It's good to kind of, I think... Freeze your meat a little bit so it gets a little hard so you can go ahead and cut it even better, especially when it comes to grinding. So after I cut these pieces, okay, 
I'm going to put it in the bowl, throw it in the freezer to get hard, not real hard, but hard enough so that I can send it through my grinder. So I'm going to cut this video short. I'm just trying to give you an idea on how I start off. You know, I'm going to trim this. And so the next time we come back, all this will be cut, all this will be cut, and I'll have them thrown in both bowls. I'm going to toss it into the freezer, and then I'll have my grinder set up, and we'll take it from there, guys. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, so um, as you can tell, uh, I, I've cut my, well, I've trimmed my, bis my brisket um, to where I felt that uh, I got just enough fat off, yet kept enough on for, um, you know, for taste. And then, and then over here you can see I cut my, my chuck roast in sections like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this way in, in cubes. And I'm going to do the same for the chuck roast. Now, over here, I don't know if you can see that. Is, um, is all the extra fat that I took off the brisket. If you want, and you, and you know, you want a little more fat content in your hamburgers, you could add a couple of these, uh, you know, a few of these fat uh, sections into your grind. So, for right now, let's go ahead and um, cut these into cubes and so what I'm going to do of course my dog now wants to go out what, what I'm doing is um, okay. so I'm going to go ahead and cut this I'm going to set this off to the side a little bit Just like so and I'm going to cut these into cubes like this. Now, you, now if you have a grinder, you're going to just have to cut these down to a size that will work best for your grinder. Let's put them in the bowl there. Same with these here. You get an idea on what they look like. See how much fat I left on it there. And you see how soft it is. You want to put this in the freezer so that it gets harder than this not freezing block hard but hard enough so that this doesn't get stuck into the grinder now I do have a, a really good grinder that I use that once it's set up you'll see how it works and if you decide you want to you know look more into the grinder or get one I'll put a link in the, in the uh, description um, or just any grinder will work. You just have to cut your pieces smaller. Let me do this. And just so you know, I I discovered grinding my meat for hamburgers just by doing a search on YouTube to see how people make the best hamburgers. And of course. A good hamburger starts with a good meat or meat that you decide you want to mix together. Okay, I'm going to put that here like so. Uh, see the fat on that? Now, this is a choice meat brisket if you get a prime you're gonna have a lot more fat content in it but I don't like my meat to taste oily you know I want to taste the beef and the fat like I want a nice balance if I can get that okay so this is a little bit hard already but we're gonna go ahead and, and cut the chuck now I'm going to put it in another bowl. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, it is a little hard. This is actually a perfect texture. It's not real hard, but it's just soft enough so that it goes through the grind real nice. But I'm gonna have to put that in the, in the fridge too so that it doesn't get too soft while this is while the brisket's getting hard for me. Okay. So we have brisket and chuck. Those are the two meats that I like to mix. One day I'll I'll get a um, some short ribs too and add that to the mix, but for now, these are the two main meats that I like to use for my hamburgers. And just and again, there are videos out there, guys, that show you um, lots of ways of making your hamburgers, but it always starts with a good mix of meat and a decent grinder so that you can go ahead and do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is, this is the way it looks, let's see if I can get this here, okay, this is my brisket, and again, this is my chuck roast, and this is the extra fat that I took off of the brisket. I may add some fat to the mix because the first time I did this mix the hamburgers taste great okay but I had wished I had a little bit more fat content in it um, it wasn't dry but it could have been if could have, it could have tasted a tad bit better All right, guys I'm gonna cut the video short and then we're gonna come back and we'll be set up for grind we'll be right back Okay guys, welcome back. So as I mentioned, I said I would go ahead and, and set up shop to uh, move forward with the grinding. Here I have my brisket, my chuck roast, and some of that fat that um, I kept behind just in case I wanted to add a little bit more to the mix. Um, <clears throat> the grinder itself is by a company called Meat, M-E-A-T. Uh, so far, a lot of the product reviews that I read about there their grinders are really good and I'm proof that that is true it's a very good grinder it's more on the commercial side but the reason why I got this grinder is because I do I grind all of my uh, dogs food on a monthly basis and I also grind my own hamburgers and who knows I may grind more stuff than that down the road um, the grinder is really nice it comes with a little drawer here and where well, you can put your extra stuff that the grinder comes with, including your plates. And so today, let's see what I have here. I am going to see this. Doesn't say the size plate that this is, but this is this this is like the middle of the range plate that they offer you with this grinder. Um, and there. This here is your cutting wheel. Okay, so let's put that in there like so, and then we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. And I really like this this uh, this addition here that they have in order to keep the plate in place. It's not like some grinders where you actually have to go and screw it go through a whole process just to get the plate out. In this case, you don't have to do that. You just, reminds me a little bit of a ship wheel, you know, that a steering wheel. <laughs> kind of cool. Let's get it nice and snug, and that's all we really need to do. Also, this whole apparatus here, um, the neck, the plate, everything, I leave in the freezer so that when it's time to grind my meat, um, this part, this neck doesn't get too hot if you're grinding a lot of meat. It, it helps with the cooling process. So let's go ahead and make sure it all works. And so we're going to go ahead and grind the, the brisket and then we're going to follow up with the chuck roast and maybe I'll add a little fat to that. Alright, here we go. Let's go ahead and feed my grinder a little bit. And by the way, this grinder... <laughs> It, it really grinds quick. It's, it's one horsepower and the plate the, and the, the container here, I forgot what they call this, but um, it really 
stores quite a bit of the meat at once. So, you know, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to mix it, guys. I'm just going to mix it. Just like that. Okay, so here we go. tossing them in there like it's grinding as soon as I put it in at a fast rate. You want to make sure you get your meat in there so that you don't run it dry. Okay. I mean you saw how fast that did that. Alright so let's go ahead and put some more meat in here. Probably could have let the brisket sit in the freezer a little longer. It is a little soft, but I think we'll be okay. All right. I mean, I basically got this thing full. That's another advantage of getting a really good grinder, guys, is you can get, you can increase your work, your workload, at a, and get it done at a much faster rate when it comes to grinding. Let me show you what I have in here. I mean, those two, these two items were full, and it, well, I'm, I'm almost done with them already. Um, I'm going to bring the camera over here. So that is how full it is. And this is where it's going to go. And I'm telling you, it feeds it really quick. So let's see if I can feed it and give you an example of how this works here. Uh, okay, let's get this here. I mean, these are pretty good sized chunks of wheat. Sometimes you may need to give it a little push. Tune it up real quick, guys. It's really impressive. So you got an idea of how quick that this grinder grinds this meat. If I had now, I, I, I also have a smaller grinder that did the same job, but at, but at a much slower rate, okay? This is a game changer, this grinder, no, no question. I mean, I'm just, it's, it's grinding it up as soon as I throw it in. Okay. I don't even have enough room on this plate or this... Um, Container is going to all the meat. All right, let's just throw the rest of it just like that. Okay, I'm going to throw the rest in there just like that. Okay. If you're looking to get yourself a really cool Christmas gift and you want to start grinding your own meat, getting different mixes, and just experimenting, this, my friends, is a nice gift <laughs> to yourself. I'm going to 
grind a little bit of the fat, not too much, just to kind of get it in the mix a little bit. Okay, so you got an idea on how I mix my, my, my two meats and how I grind it. You, you have an idea uh, you know, on the grinder that I use. Uh, later, I'll, I'll kind of do an up close, um, and I'll do some up close footage on the grinder itself so you get a better idea on what it is that I'm using because you can't quite see it from an angle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grind this two more times through. Uh, send it through twice, uh, no, two more times, and then um, after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you how I make my burgers and how I weigh them. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I actually got a, a little bit bigger container to, to do what it is I need to do here. I've already sent it through twice. I'm going to send it through one more time. And I wanted to mention that um, when you've grind, grounded your meat at least twice, it's good to give it a, a good kind of a mix, you know, like I'm doing here. I've already done most of the mixing, but I just want to give you an idea so that you mix both the chuck and the brisket together really well. It looks like a lot of meat, but this should yield me about, I don't know, like 28 burgers. And I used to go to Costco and buy those frozen patties. And I think you get like 25 to 30 in a packet for, I think they were anywhere. Well, it depends which one you get. If you get the, the grass-fed version, it's a lot more money, but... Um, you know, you can turn this into quarter pound burgers, half pound burgers, and I'll show you how to do that. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send this through here one more time, and you're going to follow me through this journey. Just a second here. Okay. Give yourself plenty of working space if you're going to do this. All right, so let's go ahead and load her up. Can you see that? Yeah. You can, I can literally fill this pan up all the way past the rim here. See that not okay. Almost there. Of course, since I've grounded it twice, it's gonna go through a lot quicker. Let me see if I can set this camera up a little more. Just like that. Okay. So here I've got a full container of brisket and Chuck roast. And this is the reason why I got this this commercial grade blend, uh, grinder is because I could do this at a much faster rate. And when you make, again, when you make as much dog food and when, you, when as much grinding, you know, as, as much hamburgers as I do, you know, buying right the first time is your best bet. Um, but again, if you don't have, if you don't have this grinder, that's okay. So it's going to take you a lot longer to do it with a smaller one. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat>
Okay. It is very cold. Alright, so this. I should have used this container first, but I kind of forgot I had it. This is what I use for my dog's food, so I didn't think about maybe using it for this. Okay, that is it. Let's give you a close-up of what this looks like inside. Ooh, my fingertips are freezing. Okay. And there it is. It's one chuck roast and one brisket. Okay. So, um, of course, you guys don't have to use this much brisket and this much chuck roast. You can get the meat, cut it in half, use as much as you want, um, however you want to do it. So, what we're going to do next is I'm going to I'm going to cut this off, and then you should. Uh, see me uh, measuring the burgers and um, turning them into burgers. So we'll see you soon. Okay guys, we are back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I make my burgers starting with uh, a fairly cheap digital scale um, you can get these on Amazon anywhere between fifteen to twenty dollars. Um, I also have this Weber hamburger press. This is a really simple hamburg or hamburger press, but it gets the job done really well. See, so basically, this is the way it looks like this. So you can you can make quarter pound burgers, or you can make half pound burgers. It's up to you. Half pound, quarter pound. I like to make quarter pounds. I really want to make my um, my mix last as long as possible. But you can also decrease the amount of mix, hamburger mix, that you use for your quarter pounders. So in this case, I only measure out about five ounces. That's really all I need. And when you go to the store and you buy those big um, those big hamburger patties, for you know like Costco for like 30 35 40 bucks they're about as thin if if not maybe even thinner than than what I'm making them so let's go ahead and do a little sample for you um, the first thing you want to do is 
you want to get some of this food plastic stuff to put over the hamburger press. Otherwise, if you try to um, if you try to press your meat just over the plastic, it'll stick. Okay. If you put one of these on, this will last a lot longer than just throwing on a wax paper every time, so you don't waste your wax paper on the press itself. And you can afford to waste more of these than you can of this. So this will go a long way. Um, you will, however, need wax patty paper. Like this is what you, this is. You know, hands down, this is what you're going to need in order to make these. Uh, hamburger patties not stick to the top of this or even stick to this if you decide not to use the plastic wrap okay um, I know some people say well you can put oil in here and do that I, I've done all that I don't like how it turns out it's kind of a pain to use so I just use the plastic wrap and I buy these wax patty papers okay this here is my digital scale it's a little okay so this is all you need here for the job so let's go ahead and get started so right now I'm gonna clear it out to zero alright and let's see if we can bring this here so you can actually see what it is that I'm doing okay okay so Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of this meat, about that much. I already know this is too, well, it may not be too much. And I'm going to put it on the scale, and we're at 4.77 ounces, okay? We want to go to about 5 ounces. That's a little over. I don't like to go over, but I don't mind going under a tad. So we're at 4.98 ounces. All right. The next thing you want to do is you want to ball it up. Rule number one, do not ball it up tight. You see a lot of people, they, you know, they get these, you know, they get this meat, they ball it up tight. My understanding is you want to keep the fibers in the meat loose so that it keeps, it tastes juicy when you eat it. That is my understanding, and it makes sense. Why, why would you ball it up tight anyway? So just, just enough so that you can get it on this little press here, just like that. All right? And then you want to just, I like to squeeze it down a little bit, just like that, so that it looks kind of even on all sides, and it'll press down evenly. Then I get a piece of wax paper, and I place it over the top, just like that. I set it, it's already set at, uh, well, let's make sure. Yeah, it's already set at the quarter pound side. Okay, five ounces of meat, and I'm going to turn it into a quarter pounder. And I'm going to press down just like this. That's it. And I like to press down on all sides so that there are no air bubbles that show on top. This is really, I mean, they have more fancy, a lot more fancier burger presses. But this is all you need. This thing works great, believe it or not. And then you take the lid off, and then there's your burger. It's just been pressed. And it also, this particular burger press causes an indent in the middle so that when you cook the patty, it doesn't um, bubble, like get, like bubble up or get too big in the center, and it stays flat. That That's what I... That's what I think that little indent is for. If, if it's not, somebody correct me, please. But, but basically, that's what it's for. And so you see how easy it comes off that plastic wrap? This is why you put the plastic wrap on the press. And then there's your patty. A perfectly round patty. And so what I'm going to do is, you can see over here, I've already started on, on making my patties here. I just place it on top. And once I get them all placed on top, I'm going to put it in the fridge for it to harden some. After they've hardened, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put them in uh, these bags here. These Ziploc 
uh, bags that I get from Costco and you can fit four in one bag or you can get and you can get some smaller bags just like them to fit maybe just one in case you want to take one out one day and defrost it and and just make one for yourself you guys you can go all kinds of ways with this um you can <clears throat> You can get a more fancy press, you can get a better scale, but you don't really need those. If you just want to get started, this is all you need, okay? Um, okay, so that's it for this. Uh, I'm going to give you my final conclusions on everything. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the meat grinder, and um, that's it. We'll see you shortly. Okay, guys, we are back. So, um, I left off with how I, you know, how it was that I make my hamburgers, and I showed you a little on the hamburger press. Um, with that press and with the meat that I had, I was able to yield about 51 hamburger patties. Now, I will say that. I started out measuring those patties at five ounces, um, but then I thought, you know what? <clears throat> I don't really need five ounces. Four ounces is enough. So I started measuring at four ounce patties, and it gave me the total of 51 hamburger patties that I, that I got. Now, obviously, if I started out doing four ounces, I probably would have gotten closer to maybe 65 maybe 70 but that's what I got and you know the amount of patties are going to be dependent on how much meat you get right so <clears throat> I should have broke this out earlier but um, so on the chuck roast the net weight on the chuck chuck roast was just under five pounds okay Let's see. So the, the, the net weight on the chuck roast was five pounds. The net weight on the brisket was 11.3 pounds. So I had an 11.3 pound choice brisket from Costco and just under five pounds of chuck from my local Kroger fries store. And that gave me 51 four ounce and some five ounce burgers okay um, and so this is basically the way it looks I've got about 51 there and I'm gonna put them in the freezer I'm gonna get them hardened up a little bit and then I'm gonna put them in their in their uh, plastic Ziploc bags now a little bit about the meat grinder um, well first I want to say this thing is 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 base, I mean it's heavy it's very heavy so if you decide to invest in one of these keep that in mind but if you really want to make the man of your life happy or even the woman of your life happy who likes to eat grounded meat um, and, or likes to make their own meat from sausages to hamburger patties or whatever then you won't go wrong with one of these if you can't afford one of these They've got a plethora of grinders on Amazon that you could go with. Um, just remember that you want to get one that's been tried and true. Do your research on it because a lot of those Chinese made ones are very disappointing. I still have one and I can attest to that. So yes, it is very, very heavy. Um, the, one that I have, the one that I have here is a size 22, okay? the the neck I mean it's I mean this has to weigh at least I don't know maybe maybe 10 pounds I mean that's how well built this machine is um, so it is a, a it is a one horsepower machine and I also bought the uh, pedal for it as well the good thing about the pedal is you can use both your hands and control um, if whether or not you want the grinder to stop or keep going or whatever. So you have more control of your grind than you would if you were just using 
your hand to switch off and on at all times. This machine also has a reverse option, so if it ever gets stuck, which it rarely ever does, it, just, it keeps going pretty good. Um, you can you can reverse whatever whatever's in it uh, or whatever's stuck in it. I'll put a link in the description to where you can get this off of Amazon. But right now, I think that um, Meat has a sale on these, and it's like a a holiday sale or something. I don't. I, I'm not an affiliate of theirs, so I don't get any commission off it if you buy it off their site for less. I'm just trying to share with you what you can get out of this machine if you decide to go with it. Anyway, guys, I think that's pretty much it. I want to thank you for watching. Feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe or even share this video if you'd like. Um, I'm hoping to make some more grinding videos down the road, especially with my dog's food. This thing worked really well when I... When I, I made my dog's food, um, I was able to grind chicken, pork, and um, chicken, pork, and I'm trying to remember, oh, and and some ground meat. So I did all that, and I was able to make this food, and I think I got like 31 servings out of it with everything else that I put in. So one day I'd like to go through all that and show you exactly how I make this food. Um, there was something else I was going to mention. Well, anyway, I cannot remember. Oh, uh, the big question that I see a lot on the internet is, can you grind bones with a grinder? So, when I first bought this grinder, my intention was to also grind the chicken bones that I got for my dog and, and, and give it more volume, but I decided not to do that um, in fear that maybe he could choke on one or I just... I don't know, I, I didn't see the need to do it, so I just grind meat with it. I don't, I don't doubt that this machine could probably grind bone if you choose to do so, but keep in mind that it only comes with one blade, so if you're gonna grind, if you're gonna grind bone and things like that, you might want to try and get an extra blade first. Um, I think Amazon sells extra blades, I don't know if meat does. But I think there are substitutes, but make sure you get those blades first. Make sure they fit before you use the original blade to grind your bones. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.